And today, it's Pee Wee Herman edition. Songs and music associated with Pee Wee Herman. I say music and not necessarily songs because, well, we'll tell you about that later on. Anyway, now is the time where we take a moment and pause and say thanks to everyone who's making the world run. Let's start with the men and women in the military, police officers, firefighters, doctors, nurses, lab technicians, hospital orderlies, small business owners, restaurateurs, truck drivers, everyone working at the grocery stores and fast food joints. 1207 in the West, Talk Radio 790, KABC, The John Phillips Show, broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios. Mr. Randy Wang has the day off. He is enjoying a well-deserved vacation. He'll be back with us on Monday. 800-222-KABC is the television. It's not the television. It's the telephone number. Sorry, Alexander Graham Bell. Soldier short. <laughs> it's almost Friday. What can I say? All right. Well, one of the things that's true about the place that we live is that while Los Angeles is the second largest city in the country, we're really not a city in the way that one normally thinks about a city. If you're talking about New York, you're talking about Boston, you talk about Philadelphia or Detroit, you're talking about cities. They have big buildings, they're built vertically, and the city has a character. What's different about Los Angeles is that we're not really a city in that sense. We're built horizontal. And when you talk about the city of Los Angeles, you're really talking about three different definitions. You have the city of LA, which is a city of three million people that goes all the way from San Pedro at the Port of Los Angeles to the San Fernando Valley, the outskirts of the San Fernando Valley, places like Granada Hills. And then you have another version, which is the county of L.A. Those are Los Angeles and all the other cities, Long Beach, Pasadena, Santa Clarita, Antelope Valley, everything that makes up the county of L.A. And then you have the five-county region of Southern California of L.A., Orange, San Bernardino, Riverside, and Ventura counties. But we don't really think of ourselves as being Los Angelinos. You think about yourself as someone who lives in Venice or Silver Lake or San Pedro or Chatsworth. Your neighborhood is what you identify with because that's really where you are. In fact, the city was put together in a political way. The San Fernando Valley needed the water, so the San Fernando Valley became part of L.A. We needed a port, so we ran the city of L.A. down the 110 freeway to San Pedro and Wilmington, and that became part of the city. It's a city that was literally patched together for political reasons. Every so often, parts of the city try to break off. We saw that with Valley Secession. Hollywood tried it. San Pedro tried it. None of it worked. But every so often, people get fed up with L.A. City Hall, and they try to do their own thing. Because we're not a city per se, and because we have all of these neighborhoods, we look at things very differently. In fact, there's a lot of people who live in the city of Los Angeles who don't even know that they live in the city of L.A. And there's people that don't live in L.A. who think that they're in L.A. If you're in Encino, you are in the city of Los Angeles. If you are in Beverly Hills, you are in an independent municipality. And because of that, and because of traffic, and because of our grid, we kind of stay in our own neighborhood. There's no subway system that works that takes you from one part of the city to another. You kind of just stay in your own little fiefdom. And because of that, most of us feel safe in our own little fiefdom. And when we leave our own little fiefdom, that's when things get kind of dicey. Unless, of course, the city just fails to do the basic duties of a government and chaos reigns. When you talk to someone from Chicago, 
or Washington, D.C., or New York, places that we associated with, we associate with crime. And you say, oh, my God, how can you live in Chicago? Every time I turn on the television, it's another shooting in Chicago. You guys have box scores in the newspaper. How many people were shot this weekend? It's like a sports section. How could you possibly live there and not get turned into a piece of Swiss cheese? Because every time Chicago comes up on the news, some guy is getting filled so full of lead you could use him to take the SATs. But the people who live there say, oh, don't worry about it. Don't believe it. All of the violence in Chicago happens in like one neighborhood. And as long as you stay out of that neighborhood, you're okay. All the other neighborhoods are good. One neighborhood, not so good. Avoid it. People say that about Mexico, too. A lot of people like to vacation in Mexico. You stay at a very nice resort in Puerto Vallarta. You go to a nice all-inclusive in Cancun. You go to Ixtapa. You go to all the resort areas. As long as you stay in the tourist spots, you're mostly speaking fine. There was that one incident in Acapulco where a bag of heads showed up in the town square and people stayed away from Mexico for a while and the cruise ships pulled out. But for the most part, if you're not looking for trouble in Mexico, you won't find it. I don't know if I'd go looking for an all-inclusive in Sinaloa, but Puerto Vallarta is a nice place. They have a Four Seasons. What's strange about the crime increase that we're seeing in Southern California now is we're seeing it not just in the places where you expect crime to happen. We know there are places, I'm not going to compare it to Sinaloa, but we know there are places that have trouble with, say, gang violence, where you have warring gangs that both exist in the same area and they fight over turf and every once in a while they shoot each other. We know there are parts of town where there are huge homeless populations and fires are started all the time and everyone gets their mail stolen and we have problems. But the problem with Sacramento being the source of the increase in crime, this is not necessarily a failure of just the city of L.A. or the county of L.A. or the five-county region, we're seeing a complete breakdown in law and order and the basic functions of government coming from the mothership in Sacramento. There is a sense of apathy that exists right now in the state where you know that if you call 911, the cops may or may not show up. And if the cops show up and it ends up that they stole less than $950, there's nothing really the cops can do for you. If and when the cops find the person who burglarized your home or committed some sort of crime where you're the victim and they actually arrest them and they prosecute them, they're not spending any time in jail because that's racist. So we have a system that is essentially broken down at all points. There's not one point of failure. The law is bad. The judges are bad. The parole boards are bad. The DAs are bad. Some of the police departments, the chiefs of police who work for these insane city councils, many of them are bad. It's not one point of failure. The whole system is failing. And because of that, what we know to be true about crime, how most of it happens in certain places, certain parts of town, That is being erased right now in Southern California and the state of California. Crime increases are happening all over. In fact, you have criminals who live in certain parts of town where the crime rate is bad. And what they do is they understand that the people with the money don't live there. The people with the money live in other parts of town. If nothing bad is going to happen to you if you go to those other parts of town and rob them there where the money is, then they're ripe for the pickings. And we're seeing stories about this exact scenario happening on a regular basis. We've done stories about follow home robberies where you have people who live in the San Gabriel Valley. They go out for a nice meal. 
They get followed home. They get pistol whipped as soon as they get out of the car in the garage. And everything they have on them or anything of value in their house gets taken. We've done stories about people dining al fresco in Beverly Hills. And people with guns show up and they rob their very expensive watches and they take whatever money they have in their wallet and then they're off to the races. Most recently, last night, there was a story about a robbery that happened at Craig's. If you've never been to Craig's, Craig's is a hot restaurant in West Hollywood. The individual that owns Craig's used to be the chef at Dantana's, which happens to be my favorite Italian restaurant in all of L.A. And, by the way, has the best steak in all of Los Angeles to my palate. It's a New York strip named after Dabney Coleman. I think it cost $75, $80. Maybe it went up with inflation. But it is by far the best steak in Los Angeles. So the chef from Dantana's moved over to a different part of West Hollywood and started this restaurant, Craig's. And Craig's is one of these places where you have to know someone to get a reservation there. If you don't know someone, you aren't getting into Craig's unless maybe you eat dinner at 4 or 5 o'clock or 9 or 10 o'clock. The food is delicious. It's more of a modern take of Dantana's. Dantana's is more of an old school Italian sort of menu and Craig's is very modern. They have very unique craft cocktails and it is a celebrity hotspot. When you see movie stars or celebrities being interviewed by TMZ as they walk into a restaurant, more often than not, that restaurant is Craig's. Craig's is where you go to be seen. If you're looking for a quiet dinner with the family, don't go to Craig's because you're going to be chased around by the paparazzi if they think that you're famous. In fact, the last time I went to Craig's, I went with a couple of friends. And in the restaurant, this is before all hell broke loose. In the restaurant, there was Larry King, Charlie Steiner, the broadcaster for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Michael Avenatti, who was Stormy Daniels' attorney, who is now sitting in prison. He was the one that was bouncing around from table to table like he was a politician running for office. Les Moonves, who used to run CBS and then got tossed with the Me Too scandal. He's the one married to the woman that used to be on the talk on Channel 2, Julie Chen. And Lori Loughlin of Full House fame, she's the one that got in trouble by trying to cook the admissions process at USC to get her daughter, Olivia Jade, the other OJ, to become a Trojan. All of these people were having dinner under one roof. That's the type of place that Craig's is. It's celebrity, it's wealth, it's fame. And they show up to dine with one another and have a great time with great food and great drink. Well, listen to this. This is according to ABC7. Multiple armed robberies have happened in West Hollywood over the past few months. And authorities on Thursday, that was today, were investigating yet another one as people in the area remain on high alert. The latest robbery in the city happened shortly after 1 a.m. outside Celebrity Hotspot Craig's, which is a restaurant on Melrose. According to the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, two victims were approached by two suspects in dark clothing and masks. Thanks, fake doctor. Both suspects were armed with handguns, and they ended up stealing a watch. Nobody was heard. The suspects fled the scene in a white car that was being driven by a third suspect, this, of course, comes as the Sheriff's Department seeks help finding three suspects involved in another frightening robbery that was caught on video. That incident happened just after midnight on July the 19th near Larrabee Street. According to investigators, the victim was walking on the sidewalk when a black SUV stopped in front of him. Three suspects armed with handguns and a rifle got out of the SUV, pushed the victim against a fence, took his cell phone and wallet. 
Video released by the Sheriff's Department shows the men pointing their weapons at the victim as they dig through his pockets. At one point, they knock the victim to the ground. Moments later, all three suspects take off running. Quote, it's pretty brutal. I've seen some really big people get jumped too, and if they're willing to go after those kind of people, they're going to target anyone, end quote. The city has seen several other similar incidents. Authorities are working to determine if they're connected. This is one of the most desirable parts of town. This is one of the historically safest parts of town. It has all the hot restaurants. It has all the hot nightclubs, all the hot music venues, all the hot bars. And we're not safe there. If you're not safe at Craig's, you're not safe anywhere. And the fact of the matter is that even though we're over it, and we are pulling our hair out at the prospects of getting robbed everywhere we go, including places that we assume to be safe. In Sacramento, they still don't care. They're not changing what they're doing. They're doubling and tripling down on all of their idiotic policies that don't work. And as a result, every day that goes by is a day that criminals are more emboldened. It's not like Chicago now. It's not like New York. It's not like Washington, D.C., where all the violence happens in one neighborhood. Now it is spread everywhere like a cancer. Which is why I want to open up the phones right now at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Here's my question to you. I want to know, When have you been the victim of a crime in a place you assumed you were safe in? It's one thing if you get robbed when you're at Skid Row looking to score drugs late at night. You're doing something you shouldn't be doing. It's one thing for one gang member to shoot another gang member. You know that's an occupational hazard when you join the gang. But it's another thing if you get robbed someplace where you're supposed to be safe, someplace that you go to all the time, that you don't ever feel the need to be looking over your shoulder. Those are the places right now where we're being targeted. So I want to hear from you. I want your stories. When have you been the victim of a crime in a place where you assumed you were safe? 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Your call's up next, but right now it's time to take a look at the roads. It's 1234 on the John Phillips Show, Talk Radio 790 KABC. We had some technical difficulties in the last segment. So, if you'd like to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. That's Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And if you would like to listen to podcasts of this show over the weekend, because we don't do live shows on Saturday or Sunday, just download the show wherever you download your favorite podcasts and you can enjoy it whenever it is that you want. Right now, we're taking your calls at 800 222 KABC. 1-800-222-5222. The patrons of Craig's in West Hollywood, one of the hottest restaurants in one of the safest parts of town, were robbed at gunpoint yet again. West Hollywood is seeing a spike in these sorts of robberies. It's going on not just in West Hollywood, but in neighborhoods that are regarded as safe all over the state of California. So I want to hear from you at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. When have you been the victim of a crime in a neighborhood you regard as safe? It's something that's becoming very common. I want to hear your stories. 800-222-KABC. Let's begin with Stan in Orange County. Stan, you're on KABC. Hello. Mr. Phillips, um, I like the Pee Wee Herman songs. Um, I 
think I lived in a nice neighborhood here in Orange County last April. Um, I was walking through a, a regional park, just minding, 9 o'clock in the morning, minding my own darn business. Guy passed me up on a bicycle and blocked my path. And next thing I know, he's 20 feet away from me, and he brandishes a knife after yelling at me in Spanish some really nasty things that he's going to kill me. Um, I backed off. I was kind of caught off guard. Um, got to my cell phone and called the police. And fortunately, the guy, just as I distanced, distanced myself from him, he saw me on the phone and drove off. And unfortunately, the cops showed up and didn't even take a report, really didn't do much of anything. Um, 20 minutes later, I continued my walk through the park, and I saw the suspect. I called the cops back, and they came out and actually contacted him. And he was never arrested for brandishing or anything of the assault against me, uh, he was taken away for a warrant. Um, it was kind of, the whole thing was kind of frustrating. This is the park where there's ladies and kids and people on bicycles, and everything enjoying their, enjoying their time. And, uh, anyway, it was just, it's, um, uh, it's very eye opening and very frustrating. And if you're out and about, be aware of your surroundings at all times. Did he have the knife still on him when the cops showed up and talked to him? Well, there's more to the story. I don't want to take a bunch of your time. Apparently, the guy dumped the knife when he saw me on the phone, and he kept going down the trail. So when I went down the trail later on, because I'm not going to be intimidated after I talked to the police and they really did do nothing, I found the knife. So I had custody of the knife um, when, the, when, I, when I found the guy 15, 20 minutes later and the cops came back out. I even told the police officers, here's the knife that he had. They didn't want it. Um, I still have it on top of my water heater at my house. They said it's, <laughs> it's involved. I, I was, anyway. And on top of this whole thing, I'm a retired cop. Um, I would not have handled the thing the way it got handled, but that's a whole other story. So, If you don't mind my asking, what part of Orange County did this happen in? It was up in the eastern uh, Villa Park, uh, kind of um, uh, Orange Park uh, acres. Uh, it was the Santiago Oaks Regional Park is where it happened, off Cannon and Taft area there. Oh, that's nice a high rent there. area. That's not a bad area at all. Yeah, a million and a half, two million dollar homes plus. Yeah, it was, it's a nice area. It's a nice park. And uh, a lot of my neighbors now won't even go into that park now because of what happened. And I'm sure it was, well, hopefully it was an isolated incident. But nonetheless, you got to be careful and, and the fact that nothing was done the chief of police at the, about a week before that um hello yeah the eastern uh, Villa park. you're still Are with you still us there? turn your radio down oh, sir okay yeah i'm sorry um the chief of police about a week before this happened made a presentation to city council about how crime specific, specifically violent crime was down in the city of orange well if it doesn't get reported as in my case it was not reported i guess you can say crime is down well i will anyway, say one bad thing i will say one bad thing about that part of orange and villa park when i was an undergraduate student at cal state fullerton they forced me to take a geology lab so i could graduate and on the hottest day of the year they made me go up to that area and we all had to play around in the dirt and I felt like I was on the surface of the sun. You poor thing. <laughs> it does get warm out there. It does get warm out there. But that's my story. Um, just thanks for letting me vent a little bit. But um, anyway. Well, thanks for the call, sir. I appreciate it and happy to hear you're okay. Let's go to no, Seth. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to Seth in Long Beach. Seth, you're on KABC. Hello. <laughs> Hey, John, um, your timing is fabulous. My car got broken into two nights ago. Uh, they tried to steal it, which is ironic because it's not, it's not the fanciest car. And um, so now it's in the shop because the column is all busted out. And I guess what they do is they steal it, they drive it away, and that's where they take your catalytic converter because why else would you want a, a Hyundai Tucson with 150,000 miles? But I was going to tell you also, and I think this is all relevant, uh, by day, I do insurance, and I work with the cops, and they're demoralized. I was in Irvine on Monday when they got drilled for a million-dollar burglary. And then at night, I do comedy, and I won't go to Hollywood. Like, I could get booked in Hollywood right now, and it's so awful there. My friends went to one of my shows there, and this is not me plugging my comedy. And it was so bad, we parked this nice Escalade, my buddy's car, by, like, a couch and a bunch of homeless people. And I'm like oh, my God, I'm going to be worried about this all night. I should be focused on my comedy. And it's 
So it's kind of a mess right now. Well, it's one of these things, too, that is always on your mind. It's anxiety that didn't ever used to be there. I brought my my electronic equipment that I use for the radio show into the studio on Friday so all the software could be updated. And I spent the weekend near the near the ocean. And I played golf on Sunday morning in Long Beach in what I don't regard as a bad part of Long Beach. And I thought to myself, oh boy, should I have my electronic equipment in my car for four hours while I go out and play 18 holes? And every so often when I was out there, I'd say to myself, God, I hope the car doesn't get broken into. I hope they don't steal my electronic equipment because I know what the LAPD John, says. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, so yeah, one of the comedians I, I work with, he was at SoFi Stadium, and he had all this film and TV equipment in his car, and I guess what they were saying was filmed from somewhere far away from SoFi with these super binoculars. He came back to his house, left the car there, and when he got there, either they stole all the equipment out of the car or they just took the car, but when they found it, all the equipment was gone. So, And I live in a nice part of Long Beach. Like, I don't... Um, it is, uh, you know, I'm taxpayer. Like my property taxes have gone up 150% since we bought the house in 07. I don't feel like it's 150% better there. And I love Long Beach. So this is very tough to talk about. You know what I mean? Well, it's not just the electronic equipment in your friend's car. News vans are being robbed. News vans, when they're out covering stories, sometimes they're covering crime stories. They park the news van so the reporter and the cameraman can do a live shot and then the equipment in the news van gets stolen. In fact, in San Francisco recently, CNN was doing a story about smash and grabs and all of the theft, the rampant theft going on in San Francisco. They hired a security guard to watch the news van while they were doing their live shot. And the smash and grab thieves were so quick, they were able to smash the window, steal the stuff before the security guard was able to do anything about it. Yeah, that is the least surprising story I've heard about San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> we won't go there with our child. Like, really? Like, what a shock. Or water is wet, right? So, anyway, I will, uh, I'll let you go. But uh, All right. Well, hey, go ahead and plug your comedy. When, when can people see you oh, next? Oh, wow. I can plug this. All right. Uh, September 2nd um, at Beer Garden Social House in Long Beach, I'm running a show, and I got some funny people on it. So, at Seth Jaffe123. Thank you so much, Sean. All right, thank you for the call. 800-222-KABC is a telephone number, 1-800-222-5222. There was just another armed robbery in West Hollywood, this time outside of the hot restaurant Craig's. People are getting robbed all over Southern California in areas that are not regarded as bad. I want to hear your stories at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. When have you been the victim of a crime in an area that you regard as safe? That's happening all over, and our dearly elected officials need to hear about it. They need to hear your stories. 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. More of your calls coming up, but right now it's time for KABC Dependable Traffic. It's 1249 on this Throwback Thursday, Pee Wee Herman edition of the John Phillips Show. Taking your calls right now at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. When have you been the victim of a crime in a neighborhood that you regard as safe? There was yet another armed robbery in West Hollywood outside of Craig's. It's happening all over, unfortunately. Let's go to Kelly in the OC. Kelly, you're on KABC. Hello. Hey there. Um, I was the victim of indecent exposure, I guess you'd say, outside a a Trader Joe's in Cambria, uh, San Jose. Very, you know, normal family neighborhood. I was pushing my my then baby out, and um, the guy called me over to his car. I didn't get too close. Uh, was asking me directions, and as I looked down, he's uh, fully erect, uh, you know, just trying to get my reaction. So after you bought your produce, he showed you his. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I did report it, 
he was known to be in the area, just got his jolly by doing this. Total creep. But I guess the most upsetting thing was when I reported this. I got a, a lawyer who called me from the DA's office, and, you know, he said, well, I kid you not. He says to me, you know, did that really bother you? I mean, it was <laughs> almost like he, he yeah. He acted so, like the guy know, was doing you a favor? I, I don't know. I was so disgusted. I just said, yeah, well, I don't know if that's how, you know, you get turned on, but that's not my thing. Yeah. I, I, well, I, that's not exactly the timeless art of seduction. Right? <laughs> there really wasn't much to be impressed by, let me tell you. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was you know... It was very offensive, and, you know, they're everywhere, these people. I, I just, I don't know. Well, thank you for the call. I don't I, know whatever uh, happened to him, but I did report it, so I, I advise to do that. Get him off the street. They're creeps. Well, let's help you put the fruit back inside the loam. <laughs> let's go to Fred in Barstow. Fred, you're on KABC. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, we have a yard in, in Ontario. And it's, there's a security guard with video and everything. A guy broke through the one gate. He got the lock on the one gate that does not have uh, uh, the security there. And he hooked up to a trailer, a very expensive trailer, that equipment trailer, threw some expensive little equi- pieces of equipment, including uh, uh, welding leads, which are very, very expensive, on the trailer. And then he <laughs> broke into one of the service trucks and took parts out of that. He did all this in about five minutes. The video shows him coming in at 2 in the morning and leaving at about 2.04, I think, and leaving at 2.10 out of the gate past the security guard. But they can't get the plate. So here's the frustrating part. The Ontario PD, they came down, they made a report. They were very courteous and very nice. Well, I asked them about the traffic cameras in the area, if they could maybe catch on one, and they still haven't got back to me. I, I don't understand. He said, be patient. I'm like, well, how long are you going to let this go? There's there's traffic cameras at the intersections around where this happened. They, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, there's no traffic. It would be very easy to just take 10 minutes, look at those cameras, and possibly get a plate and follow up. I can't get them to do anything. Here's what I don't understand. If you're a crook and you can do all that in five minutes, can't you make an honest living? I, I don't get it because here's the thing. One of the other yards around the corner that we're affiliated with, it looks like the same black pickup truck victimized them. He tried to steal a pressure washer unit out of there, probably a $5,000 unit that is mounted on a trailer and for cleaning the trucks. He tried to steal that, and they caught him. They just kicked him out of the yard. This was about four months ago. But all that's on video. Now, I can share that with the police as well, but I don't know that that's going to do any if there's – going to act i i don't understand are they that busy that they don't have the time to 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 take whatever an hour invest in figure out who this guy is at, at least look at the cameras that's this is frustrating sir do you know what the most violent neighborhood in all of ontario is no i don't it's the departures I gate don't. of spirit airlines at the airport okay yeah. Thanks for the call. 800-222-KABC is the telephone number. 1-800-222-5222. More of your calls coming up right here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's 1257 on this Throwback Thursday, Pee Wee Herman Songs edition of the John Phillips Show. Fix California Hour coming up after the news at 1. Let's go back to the phones and begin with John in Los Angeles. John, you're on KABC. Hello. Hey, John. How are you? Good. Thanks for bringing up this topic. It's a topic that's been weighing on my mind recently. And uh, so we're driving back from Orange County near Huntington Beach from a conservative rally, and we had our American flag fully displayed outside of a the car and i guess uh somebody wasn't too happy with that and they decided to shoot at us while we were in the car on the freeway yes which freeway was it the 405 yes 405 over there near the lawndale area 
Oh, they used to have a billboard with my picture on it there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that they're always advertising your radio station. Did any of the bullets hit the picture of me? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad that didn't get hit. I'm glad you didn't get hit too. Yeah. Thank God. Well, okay, that had to be scary. To in, John. I know right. uh, you have other callers on hold. Thanks. Thank, thanks for the call, sir. I appreciate it. It's tough out there. Getting shot at on the 405, right near where my sign used to be. Bad, bad, bad. All right, we've got two more hours coming up on the John Phillips Show. The Fix California Hour is next. Don't you go anywhere. This is Talk Radio 790 KAB.